Hey guys, it's Jen here from Nails by Jen. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to my channel. So today's video was a highly, highly requested tutorial. I posted a picture on my Instagram from a set of nails that I did last year, and I had tons of ladies asking me how I did it and if I could do a tutorial. So I wanted to show you a few different patterns and also a couple of different techniques. So if this is something you're interested in, stick around, keep watching. As always, don't forget to click that like and subscribe for me. And let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm going to start off with all the Madame Glam colors that we're going to use for this design. So I've got this one here. It's called Workaholic. It is a nice taupe color. If you have another one called Back to Cali, it is nearly identical to this, so you could use that one as well. And then I've got this other one here called Navy Blue. It does have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of shimmer in it, but it really doesn't matter for this design. And then I've got this green one. It's called Night Shift. And I've got this mauve one called Darling. And then I've also got this one here. This is my absolute favorite, favorite color from Madame Glam that I've received so far. And it's called a Velvet Queen. Now, one thing I will say is if you don't have colors that are in the sort of muted, taupey kind of um, color tone that you're looking for. So for example, I'm going to use this one as it is and this one as it is, but I'm actually going to mute these ones out by using this taupe color and mixing them in. Um, I posted that picture on Instagram from a set of nails that I did last year and everyone absolutely loved them. This is a very highly requested video. So that's what I'm sort of referencing from. So you definitely need to have some kind of a taupe because you can use that taupe color with any other color and make it a muted sort of it's not a it's not a pastel it's just a muted version of that color so we've got those ones and then I'm also going to be using the white so this is the perfect white because we want to also have a lighter color of whatever the base color is and that's what we're going to be doing our pattern in now I'm going to show you two ways of doing the sweater nails. Um, I'm going to show you the way that I did them in the image on Instagram and then I'm going to show you another way, which is also a way that I've done in other images. I just didn't um, repost the other ones. So you're going to need two to top coats. We're going to need both matte and shiny. So as you guys know, I absolutely love the Young Nail Stain Resistant as my shiny top coat. And I've also got this new matte top coat. I normally use the 2M Beauty one, but they didn't have it at the pink chair when I placed my order. And um, Kelly had recommended to use the Crystal Nails Matte Ever. I really, really like this. Um, it's got a really nice brush on it. It's got one of those round headed brushes. So it's very nice to apply. It's extremely thin. It's actually not as um, cloudy as other ones that I've used in the past. I, I thought that maybe there was something wrong with it or I had to mix it, but I did give it a good mix and it still was quite um, see-through, which is kind of nice, um, but it does cure very matte and I haven't had any issues with clients using it. And then you're going to need some type of a palette. I just have a tile that I purchased at Home Depot. There's a chunk of glitter that's stuck on there. And I really like this palette knife. I purchased this on eBay a long time ago. I will try to find a link for it and link it below. Um, I like it's very flexible and it can bend on both sides. So I really like it for mixing. I used to just use like a very, you know, the original palette knives that we've all gotten over the years in her nail products. It's just like a stick with a flat end on it. And sometimes I just found it a lot harder to mix with because it's flat. So having a bend in this is really nice to use. And then as far as brushes go, I'm actually going to be using these ones today. So I purchased these a long time ago. I did put them in a haul video. They're from eBay. There is a third one that is a bit shorter. I think it's in between these two um, sizes. So I'm going to be using this one for the line work. Now I did cut a few of the bristles, maybe like six or seven bristles off around just because I found it to be just a smidgen um, thicker than I would like. And then I have not done anything to this one and I haven't used either of these. These are actually brand new. Um, so I'm going to be using these today. There are a set of brushes from Fusion that they just came out with. It's a rose gold. 
um, fusion handle or rose gold handled um, detailer set and there's three of them and I really want to get those so those are on my wish list to purchase next and then we are going to be using some clear acrylic so I've just got the speed clear from young nails and I'm going to be using this old um, cuticle pusher I don't use these on clients but I just use them literally when I'm scooping acrylics or glitters or things like that they're perfect for that because they're really really large and I believe that is it for products. So let's get into the design. Okay, guys, so if you are going to do the design exactly as I'm showing you today, you are going to want to build your nails in some type of a opaque peach or um, opaque pink, cover pink, cover peach, whether it's acrylic or gel, does not matter. You want to finish file your nails and get them ready for the gel polish application. So I've mentioned in other videos that when I'm applying a gel polish on top of my acrylic, I do not buff the Nails because I like to have that little bit of texture that the hand files leave behind so that it gives the gel polish something to kind of grip onto and you have less chipping issues with that so I will show you why you're going to build it with the cover peach or cover pink um, in particularly for the middle nail and the only reason I say to build all of them in that same color is because it's easier it's easier than you know pulling out two jars and doing some nails in clear and some nails in cover pink but the main one that you want the um, cover pink or cover peach for is the middle nail that we're doing the design on so I'm not going to start with the middle nail I am going to just go from thumb to pinky so I'm starting off with the thumbnail and the first things that we want to get doing is to mix our colors. So I've got my palette here. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use the taupe as is. I'm going to use this um, mauve color as is. And I'm also going to use the green color as is. So the only two that we have to mix are the purple, excuse me, the navy blue and this velvet queen. So I'm going to do them in this order. So I'm going to do um, the taupe is going to be the thumb, pointer finger, middle, the blue will be the ring finger, and the more pinky kind of color from the Velvet Queen will be on the pinky nail. So I'm just going to grab a good dollop of this navy blue, and I'm going to grab a good dollop of this Velvet Queen. So then I'm also going to take some of this Workaholic and I'm going to mix it into these two colors just to make them more of muted tones. So we're going to start there and you'll see that they kind of get sort of muted, gray-ish you could say I guess, like kind of a, you could maybe use, even use gray if you have gray on hand or black and white. Um, I just find I it's easier to use the taupe and I really like the tones that come out with it. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to do the blue one as well. So you'll see it just kind of grays it out. Again, I really, really like these tones. So now what I'm going to do is also dollop a little bit of each of these on the palette. And I'm just going to Put a little bit up there. I probably should have done them in order <laughs> on the palette. So the taupe, the green, the mauve, the navy, and the velvet queen. But I wasn't thinking. Just it'll be easier when you're applying to remember which is which. Now you don't need a lot for this part because this is just going to be for the detail work on top of the nail and we're going to be adding some white to these as well. So I'm just going to push these over to the side and then I'm also going to grab a little bit of this one and a little bit of this one as well. So now I'm going to add some white to all five of the smaller um, dollops, I guess you would call them. Oh, that's a bit much. So I'll grab a little bit of that one for the navy because I put too much there. If I can scoop some of that up, shove it over there. So again, you just want to make a lighter version of these colors and you can go as light as you want I don't like them to be um, super super contrasting or anything like that 
uh, but you just want to have them be a shade lighter. Again, I'm just doing the same thing with all of them. That one I'm going to add a little bit more white because I think that it's just not quite light enough. Now let me just compare it to the other one. Yeah, I might add a little bit more, just a smidgen more. So now you guys might wonder what I do with all of these colors when I have leftovers. So if I mixed too much on my palette, I actually have what I call a junk jar. And literally any color that I mix will go in that jar. Um, I do have some other ones that I've made, like say a custom color, and I've just been like, oh my gosh, that color is phenomenal. And I will just keep whatever's left over of that color because it's so amazing. Um, but with this, if I just have like tiny little remnants, I hate throwing it away. <laughs> so I will always throw it into my junk jar. And I think right now the junk jar, it's kind of been like a purpley mauvey color for a long time because even when I've added... Um, oh shoot, I touched that blue one. Even when I've added, you know, blues or greens or anything to it, it's always kind of turned into just like a purpley sort of color. So is that contrasting enough? Yep, yeah, it is. And then I might need to grab some more white for this one because I kind of smudged it off. I really love this um, kind of like denim-y blue color. Really, really love it. I think it's gonna be a very cool color for like winter nails. All right, so there we've got all of our colors. So essentially you should have 10 colors in total, five colors and then five colors um, that match but are just slightly lighter. So I've got those all here. So I'm just going to put that onto the side now I'm going to go through, I'm going to grab my um, thumbnail. So like I said, the thumbnail is just going to be this taupe color. So basically the thumb, I'll show you this, um, I'll show you all of them here. So here we go, the thumb will be the taupe color, solid. The pointer finger will be the, what did I say, the green. I better line them up in front of me because now I'm forgetting which way I had them. There we go. Okay, so the thumbnail is going to be the taupe color, workaholic, solid all the way through. The pointer finger is going to be green, um, what is it called again? Night shift, solid all the way through. This one is going to be the mauve color, but we are going to have um, an empty space. I forget what they call what people use, that term that people use, negative space, I guess. Um, we're going to create a heart in the middle. So that's why you wanted that um, cover peach or cover pink because you want that natural nail color to just come through. Now you could build them in clear and just use the natural nail. The only problem that you have with that is you would have to make sure to put the heart up higher and onto the nail bed. Otherwise you would see sort of the transition between the tip and the um, nail bed. Uh, nail plate color so I would always recommend just using a cover color so we're going to create a design on this one that is going to have a negative space and then the navy one on the ring finger is going to be solid and the um, velvet queen is also going to be solid so like I said we're going to start with the thumb and I know that I ramble a lot you guys but I just want to be as descriptive as possible when I am doing tutorials um, so that, you know, I can really help you guys, um, and just give you different options and things like that. So I'm going to be using my fusion brush from, uh, it's number two, number two oval fusion. I got this one. It was actually gifted to me. Um, by Talia and then I loved it so much that I purchased more of them from I purchased another one from Create a Beauty so I love the bristles on this absolutely love it it's so soft so for the colors that I mixed and don't have in the bottle I'm going to use that to apply so let's get to the thumb 
So I've got this workaholic and you want to do two coats of the gel polish carrying in between. I always say like Madame Glam gel polishes cover very very well but you do want to do thin coats because I did I have found in the past that if I was rushing and I've just done one good coat um, and it covers nice but it's a little on the thicker side right in order to get that real good opacity it does not cure properly so I always recommend doing two thin coats just like that's so the first one we're gonna get that in the light and cure it and next I'm going to go in with night shift and exact same thing a nice thin layer of night shift that green color it's a really nice green it's not really an army green it's again it's more of like a muted green it's like they took a dark green and they just added taupe to it basically like what we did with the other colors that we mixed All right, so I'm going to skip the middle finger because that one takes a little bit more time. We're going to just work through the other ones first. So I'm going to now do the blue on the ring finger. So again, another thin coat of this and then we're gonna get it in the light. so I forgot to press record so I've just got the first layer on here of the velvet queen that we custom mixed and the what I was showing you when I wasn't recording was that um, I've shown you guys before that I didn't clean my brush with alcohol or anything like that to get the blue gel polish out of it I just went to I wiped it on the paper towel you can see here there's the blue marks and then I just went directly into the Velvet Queen and I applied it and as I do that it'll actually push the blue color or whatever previous color you've been using it'll press it to the top so then I just flipped it over and you can see here where I wiped a few times to get that blue color off and then went straight back in so my brush is pretty much um, empty from the blue it has no blue in it now so I'm just applying this Velvet Queen and I'm gonna get that first layer in the light so I'm going to go back in now and add my second coat to all four of those colors, starting with the taupe one again on the thumb. Alright, so this is what we've got so far, really nice colors. So now I'm going to work on that middle one, the mauve one with the heart. So I'm going to um, put a little bit of that color out onto my palette here just so that I can paint that little heart. And for the heart, I'm going to use my smaller um, or shorter brush. I see people all the time hand painting with long brushes and doing designs. I don't know how they do it. I find I have way better control when I'm using a shorter um, bristled brush. So I'm going to start off by just drawing my heart where I would like it to be. So I want to go pretty much center of the nail and your inside of the heart is what will will stay um, empty right so you want to have a good size
you want, you can just go in, once you have your heart painted on, you can go in with your, you know, brush from the Madame Glam, or you can use, um, you know, a smaller handheld um, brush like the Fusion one. I'm just going to try to go in with the Madame Glam because I've got it here and it's just easier. But once, you know, as you could see in the top here, I just kind of filled that in with the little brush just to make sure that I could get into that little area. Yeah, basically you just want to go in now and fill in all around. And we are going to do two coats, so you want to make sure that you do a thin layer for that first one. And this is when you can really see if you need to alter the shape of your heart. So for me, it looks like I need to angle this part just a little bit in more. To make it a little more even. And then that is good. So I'm going to get that in the light and we're going to cure that. All right, so we're going to basically repeat the same process, making sure you know, we stay within that design and that pattern. We don't want to alter that image at all. So I'm going to follow the exact same design and just kind of go around and then do the second layer of the color. Right, and then get that in the light. So I am trying to preserve my gel polish um, nail art brushes now. So I am going to take a little bit of my top coat and just kind of dollop it here. I need to get a jar of like some crappy gel or I shouldn't say crappy gel, but just inexpensive gel um, that I can use to kind of do this with my brushes because I absolutely hate wasting my top coat. So I don't know if you guys recommend like a particular gel or, or if it's your top coat you use or your builder, like what you use to preserve the integrity of your nail art brushes, but I definitely want to do that. The only thing that I find hard is when I'm switching between colors a lot. Um, it's just like to clean it off in a dollop of gel. I feel like I'm wasting a lot more gel. So I kind of tend to go back into the alcohol, which is not good. So I've completely ruined one of my other brushes with alcohol. So anyways, so this is what we've got for that one. So let's go on here and show you what we've got so far so now we're going to apply our top coats so um, I'm going to do these two shiny top coat I think is that what I'm doing yes <laughs> shiny top coat with um, the acrylic um, sprinkling and then these ones are going to be matte with just the gel polish design on top so let me just make sure I'm saying it right because I did have it I actually wrote this one out and kind of drew it you guys know normally I just completely wing my designs so now I'm not using my young nails top coat I've mentioned before I have an old top coat that um, I no longer use I haven't used it for years so I usually use it in my tutorial and then I've got the crystal nails matte so the first two will be matte and the last one will be matte I'm going to get that in the light to cure all right, so here they are all out of the light, two matte, two shiny, and then another matte. Now you can see on this one, there's a little bit of shadowing. I don't know if the, it's picking up in the camera. So I just didn't apply the product as good as I could have. Honestly, I was kind of running out on my palette. So I was trying to be as minimal. I just didn't want to mix anymore. So you want to make sure that your coverage is really good. But even if this happened on a client, they would not notice. So we're going to go into the thumb and start off there. So I will say the shiny ones do have to have the dispersion layer wiped off. So I will do that as well. So we're going to start off with this one here. Now there are so many different sweater patterns out there. 
Um, even if you just search sweater nails or even if you search sweater patterns, you might find a new one that you want to try. So I'm going to start off with my liner brush. So the one that I is a little bit longer. Ideally, I would like to have one that's even longer to do lines. And I used to have one. And honestly, I think I must have thrown it out or it just got used up and was no good. So this is why I want to order that fusion set because... I think they look pretty amazing. So I'm going to start off by drawing two vertical lines. We're going to do pretty much like the traditional one that everybody has originally seen way back in the day when sweater nails first came out. And you know, you want to try to draw as straight of a line as possible down the, the nail vertically. And you don't need to have it super, super thick or anything like that because it's just going to stay shiny. We're not top coating at all after. But if you do it too thin, I do think that over time, because there's no top coat, it could essentially kind of rub off and wear away. So you do want to have, you know, a little, you just want to make sure that there's some opacity. If you see the line down here, it's not quite as opaque. So you just want to make sure... Go over it twice if you have to. And then we're going to draw another one identical. Now you want to try to see if you can, you know, make them even. So I kind of draw a spot on the bottom and then um, a spot on the top. And basically you want to connect them. And I know sometimes drawing lines are really hard. It's honestly the easiest if you have a really long brush. I'm having a little bit, you know, more of a struggle drawing with this brush because it's not quite as long as I would like it to be. And let's see if I can, yeah, I got it pretty close. It wasn't perfectly spot on, but it was close, close enough for me. So then I'm going to now grab my smaller brush, my shorter brush, and I'm going to draw the detail work inside these two lines. So I'm going to do more of, instead of like, um, what do you call it, lightning bolt shape, I'm going to do it more rounded to have a little more curvature to it. So you want to load up your brush pretty good, like I've got a pretty good bobble on there. And it's going to be a lot smooth, see it's not like super jagged like a lightning bolt. Now, you don't need to connect them. You just want to get very close so that they're almost connected, if that makes sense. So we've got kind of, it looks like they're running into each other, but they're not touching. Um, I have done it where I have made them touch. And honestly, I find I like the look of it better without them touching. want to finish it off so you want to start up here as if there was one that was starting there and you also want to um, start down here as if you were starting another one so it just finishes off the pattern and then I'm going to go in um, with a dotting tool so you could just essentially use your brush but I'm just going to use my dotting tool and I'm actually just going to create dots on the side here so I'm just going to go basically where the end of the pattern is. I'm going to start with my dots going at the exact same place. So I'm just going to keep dotting all the way down, trying to space them, you know, evenly. And then I'm going to go in between them on the other side. That is that design there. 
So now you can see like the gel polish does not really slide around or move because we have the matte top coat. Matte top coat is very, very helpful when you are hand painting with gel polishes or gel paints to help things to not slide around while you are, um, you know, painting so you don't have to cure in between flash cure. So I'm going to get that in the light and cure that one and we're going to move on to the pointer finger. All right, so the pointer finger, we are going to start in the exact same way, two vertical lines, only I want to kind of space them a little more even so that each um, third of the nail is has like more equal parts. So you wanna find kind of the center of the nail, right? And you wanna make, well, not the center of the nail, I guess you wanna do like thirds. So, I think that's pretty equal, so I'm going to draw my lines down from there. And I do find if you go a little bit faster rather than super, super slow, if you're going super, super slow, I find that if you have any bit of a shake to your hand, you will see it and it will be a little harder. So. You just want to have a bit of a, you know, a little quicker of a draw. It does help. two lines there I'm going to grab I'm actually going to use the same brush the longer one I'm not going to use the shorter one for this one now you want to get a good size dollop on there so you see it's pretty full now you don't want to wait too long so if you notice when it comes out right it's full but if you wait or you hold your brush too long do you see how that bobble is growing and it's sliding down the nail and now I've got a big bobble on the end rather than kind of a full brush? So we want more of like a full brush rather than a bobble. And we wanna do a push pedal like I've showed you guys before where I just push down. So again, push down. And I just wanna do that all the way down the nail on one side, not going all the way, we're just going sort of to the center of the nail, a little bit past maybe the center. And I call these push petals because this is the method that I use to make my little five petal flowers. Very, very easy. Where you just press down. So now we're going to basically create sort of like what a zipper would look like. I'm going to now go halfway up this one and push. Halfway up this one and push. Halfway up this one and push. And we wanna make sure we kind of finish it off as if it was going all the way down. So I'm gonna add another one here and I might just add the tail end of one up here. All right. And then on the side, I'm just going to draw some angled lines. All right, so that is what we have for that design. And I'm going to get that in the light. Hey guys, I apologize. I do not know what is going on with me this morning, but I keep hitting the button thinking I'm hitting record and it's not recording. I'm, it's just not recording. So I don't know if it's me or the phone. So um, I started already hand painting my little heart here for you guys. So these two are done. I just have to wipe the dispersion layer off of the tacky layer from the gel polish that is the design. And I have now wiped the dispersion layer off of the shiny top coat from this and I have taken my lighter color here, my mauve color that I mixed with my um, taupe to lighten it, or my white, excuse me, to lighten it up. And I've taken my short detailer brush and I have just basically outlined the heart. So I apologize again for not having it record. I do not know what is happening this morning. So basically you just wanna take an outline 
the heart as good as you can. You do not want it super thick because we are going to be doing other detail and you want the other detail and the heart to have the same shape um, or the same thickness um, of the line. Now I will say I did, you know, make sure to kind of pull down a little bit into the middle here and I pulled down a little bit into the bottom just because I wanted to make sure I get that little point for the heart there and that little point for the heart there. And then I flash cured it for 10 seconds because I am going to be drawing some vertical lines and they are going to connect to this paint here. And I feel like I'm just concerned that if I do that and then I don't cure it, that those two together might sort of start bleeding at the connection. So I've just flash cured this heart and now we're going to get into the rest of the detail and I'm going to make sure I press record, I promise. Okay, so I'm going in with my longer brush now, the liner brush, and I'm going to create, again, those vertical lines. So I'm going to start at the top here and drag down and connect to the heart. And then you want to basically pretend that there's one in the middle there and have it follow through down to the bottom. Now we are going to have to go back over the heart with the gel polish again um, at the end because we want everything wet to add the clear acrylic. So I just have not tried to leave it all wet in the first layer just because, I, like I said, I was worried that there might be some running. But if you wanna try and just do it all in one um, layer and everything is just wet right away, you can try and do that as well. So I'm going in with my shorter brush and now's when I'm going to do more of the lightning bolt shape so it's got more edge to it. So it's the same pattern as the first one but it's just got more of an edge to it. So it's like more square if you can see what I mean. And then you want to finish that one off. And again we don't want to touch them, we just want them to kind of sort of look like they're connecting but they're not. And then on the side of this one, I am also going to do, um, I'm going to do, uh, sorry, another line. So another vertical line, like so. And then same thing on this side. Try to make them, you know, as equal as possible. And then I'm going to go in with my dotting tool. And I find if you if you create more of a like a dollop where you can get your dotting tool really, really good in there, then you can get really good dots because your dotting tool will be really full. And then I'm going to take and do some little lines on the side here just so this is not completely empty and I'm going to space them a little farther apart than we did before. to go back in now see what I'm saying you see how this dot here is starting to it's kind of blending into that line a little bit that was what I was worried about with the heart and you know what that dot is just gonna so is this one here you see so you do have to work a little bit quicker I'm actually going to redo this because I'm not happy with it at all <laughs> so I am not happy that that is happening so I'm going to wipe it off and I'm just going to use less gel polish. So here you go, you guys, you're learning as we go. I'm learning too, as I go. You just wanna make sure that it's not too thick. So let's start all over again. So I'm going to do my lines a little thinner this time and less gel polish.
Now don't forget to go back over your heart. You do have to go back over your heart. So I'm going to go back in with my brush and wet up that heart so that I can sprinkle the acrylic into it. Now, like I said, the heart may have been totally fine the first time around and it may not have, you know, overly blended or anything like that, but I just wanted to make sure that that heart was really defined. All right, now we go in with our acrylic. I'm gonna just take it off this little holder here. And we're just going to sprinkle our clear acrylic right into that wet design, covering the whole nail. And then just tap it off and get that into the light to cure. Okay, so for the blue one, I've wiped off the dispersion layer of the top coat and we're going to create that little zipper pattern once again. This time it's going to be a bit smaller and closer together. Now you don't want these little dollops, um, these little you know push pedals to be super, super thick because what could happen is what just happened in the last one where they kind of ran to, to each other and I had to start all over. So I'm not making them super, super, super thick. They're not like big blobs of gel polish but I'm just basically pushing my my brush down and I just find this is the quickest way now if you wanted these to be absolutely perfectly oval and and whatever you can take the time to go in and really define that you know the edge on all of them so that they're less teardroppy and more perfectly oval now I'm going to go back in the same way that I did the other ones and just kind of alternate up and down the other way. So it's just a little smaller. Same design. Just pushing down the brush. And then you can see you've created that little zipper pattern. Now I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to do the same thing but the other way. So I'm going and I'm going to also put them not I, um, in between this row. So I'm going to start here in this way and this way and this way. So they're in between the other row. So this is a very, you know, this design is a little more intricate, but it's not that difficult. And even if you just did one nail on a client like this, you know, an accent nail, they'll be very, very happy because it's so, so, so cute. And again, alternating in the other direction like a little zipper. Now I do not do any knitting. I would love to know below if any of you guys do any knitting and if these patterns have names like I know I've heard of like cable knitting or something like that um, my grandmother my Nona she does a lot of crocheting so then we're going to finish off the nail by doing the exact same thing the opposite way just to finish off that side just like that and then basically do the same thing on this side And you want to make sure that you're finishing off the tops, right? So like it's completely finished. We just want to add those little edges there so that it looks completely finished. So what some of you may have noticed is when I created the quote unquote zipper pattern on this side, 
I actually was supposed to create it going in the opposite direction of the center zipper. So the center zipper, the arrows or the points are facing downward, pointing down. And then the zipper pattern that I created on the left side, you can see they're pointing upward. So this one as well should have been pointing upward, but I didn't notice until I was actually editing this video. It is also pointing downward just like the center one. So you can do them in all different directions, but I like when they are going in opposite directions or they are all going in the same direction. So maybe some of you noticed, maybe some of you didn't, but I did want to point it out because I know there's a lot of us perfectionists out there. And if I noticed it while I was doing the video, I'm sure that somebody else is going to notice. So just make sure that when you do the patterns or the quote unquote zipper pattern that you do them either all in the exact same direction or you alternate them going up and down all right so that is that pretty freaking cute okay so now we're going to do the sprinkle method again with the acrylic grab our acrylic and just sprinkle that now Get it in the light and cure it. Let's check out that little heart one. So I'm just going to give it a little dusty roux here. Now I'm actually going to go back in. I'm going to put a little bit of my matte top coat onto my palette. I'm going to clean my brush because I don't want any color in there whatsoever. And I want to make that heart matte. So I'm just going to now go in and fill in this heart with some matte top coat. This looks like your natural nail is very much just peeking through. So I'm gonna shove that back in the light. 60 seconds. And let's reveal this bad boy. So how cute is that one? Very, very, very cute. It looks like a sweater, legit like a little sweater. And then we've got one last one to do. This little guy here. And this one is going to be a combination of what I've already done. Um, so very simple. Again, we're gonna start with those vertical lines. You know, that's a good place to start if you have never done um, sweater nails. The vertical lines are a very good place to start. So I'm going to go into that lighter color that we've created by mixing the white and create vertical lines. So now we're going to do a very similar pattern to what we did on the first one where it's a lot rounder of a design, but I'm going to make it even rounder. So at the top and the bottom of the pattern, it's going to kind of um, hook in a little bit more rather than straight down, if that makes sense. So I'm going to kind of create more of a round sort of S shape like that. And then another round S shape so you'll see the difference between all three of them and although they're all very similar they are different and they do um, you know create just a slight variation on the pattern Again, we want to make sure we finish off at the top and the bottom. And then you want to go through if you, you know, just want to perfect those edges a little bit. If you want to get them a little more perfect, you can do that. And then on the side of this one, I'm going to do X's. So I'm going to just go in with an X, well, with lines on one angle vertical, like so. And then we're going to go back through and create um, little X's. 
So we're going to attach them. So this one's going to go like that and like that. And you just want them to connect basically. there is that design so we're gonna get that in the light and I just pulled this guy out so this is the one with the mat and the heart I'm gonna go in the center so this is what we've got so far I think they're all pretty darn cute and depending on you know how difficult you want obviously this one's pretty easy this one's very easy you know this is a little more skill this just takes a little more time and the last one is pretty easy as well and you'll see when I pull it out just how different the center parts look, you know, when you ha all three of them are different. All right, guys, so I don't know if you can see all of the difference, but I certainly can see how this one is a lot more elongated. This one is more short and like um, lightning bolts, and this one is rounder. So all three are very, very cool. They're, this is a very simple design to do. Um, it may just take a little more time. And depending on if you wanna do the acrylic on top or not, they still look very cool. I would just recommend doing some type of a contrast. So where these ones are matte underneath, shiny on top, these are the opposite, shiny underneath and matte on top. It just makes the design pop that much more. All right guys, so that is it for another tutorial. It is definitely sweater weather. Christmas is on its way. Winter is nearly here. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to know in the comment section below which one of these designs is your favorite. And I'd also love to know when you do your sweater designs, if you prefer to do it with the matte underneath and the shiny design or the shiny underneath with the acrylic sprinkling on top to make the design matte, please let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you loved this video, please share it with someone else. And as always, guys, have an amazing day.